Hello, it's John Heaton, and today I'm going to give some love to a favourite album of mine, which I don't believe I've reviewed on my channel, which is quite surprising, which is Nielsen Schmielsen uh, from November the 11th, 1971. Uh, probably, objectively speaking, his strongest album, certainly his most successful. Um, other people have different favourites, perhaps, but if push comes to shove, this would probably be my favourite. Certainly his most well-known. And... Over the years, I've managed to acquire two posters <laughs> which came with the album. One, well, they both show the front cover, and uh, the other one is just a, sort of a larger version of of the of the front cover. I mean, I guess it's this. Well, I do have blue tech signs on the on the back, so uh, I guess I must have had it on my wall. But I guess it wasn't on too many people's wall because Harry Nielsen's hardly a pinup or. A role model to have on your wall and it's not a particularly good picture it's a bit a sort of sort of uh, murky but uh, it's a it's a good to have the posters and uh, so the album record were produced by the great Richard Perry and he just does it gets a wonderful sound on this album and on the follow-up son of Schmielsen from 72 um, recorded January to June 71 and a good length um, 35 minutes 17 seconds perfect length for an album and some of the songs are recorded in hollywood but most of the album recorded at trident studios in soho which no longer exists but an interesting location because it was right in the middle of soho in a place called sedan's court uh, from 1968 to 81 when it closed um, and it's an interesting area of london because it's right in the middle of soho and if you wanted to sort of hang out there it's not the most salubrious area to be spending the early hours of the morning waiting for your heroes but if, you, if i tell you some of the people who recorded at trident studios it kind of rivals abbey only abbey road at the time for the amount of people who recorded at trident i mean i just name a few classic albums crime of the century super tramp 74 ziggy um, from hunky dory aladdin sane those three all recorded here at trident all things must pass good Good chunk of that album from George Harrison recorded here. The Beatles recorded one, two, three, four, five tracks from the White Album at Trident. Hey Jude, well, Hey Jude was the single from the same sessions. Dear Prudence, Honey Pie, Savoy Truffle, Martha My Dear, uh, all recorded here because I think they had better recording facilities than Abbey Road. And then I Want You, She's So Heavy, the earlier version of that, early version of that was recorded here. Cold Turkey, the same. Boomtown Rats recorded I Don't Like Mondays here. Genesis recorded most of their 70s albums at Trident. Elton John and a lot of his stuff recorded here. Queen, um, Queen, Queen 2 and Sheer Heart Attack all recorded here. Lou Reed's, one of his early albums, solo albums recorded here. And if you go to the place where Trident Studios used to be in London, you'll see a blue plaque on the wall in honour of David Bowie. Uh, none of the other musicians mentioned, I guess, because David Bowie's passed away, but they could have had a a nod to Lou Reed there, I suppose, um, but, but he's the only one mentioned, Bowie. Um, and it, so it's a nice bit, piece of history. And as I say, really tucked, tucked away. You wouldn't sort of know it from being on the main street. You have to go down a few side streets and it's tucked away there. So quite difficult to find, but um, you can still visit where it used to be and see the plaque. Um, so some of the musicians, and what I like about this album is um, not every album did this at the time, have, you know, the musician credits. So you can see who, exactly who played what on each track. And I love that about the albums that do that. Harry Nielsen is backing himself up with pounding piano on most of the tracks. He's got a very distinctive style. So he's basically doing superb vocals. This, at the time of this album, his vocals were at their peak kind of, you know, the Nielsen we all know and love, you know, that beautiful voice, which he would lose in later years but on here he's on top form and on son of schmielsen as well on top form and um that all contributed to a great sounding album and also the song quality is is very consistent it starts off with gotta get up which is a reworking of a song he'd had for a few years and he'd laid down an early version of it on the aerial ballet albums and album from 68 and he reworked it here and it's very effective opener and driving along is an, is a very infectious second song and then we've got an interesting cover early in the morning which was recorded in hollywood earlier and it's just 
organ and vocal, Harry Nielsen, no one else is on the track. And it's very atmospheric and Harry's vocal is just sensational. And this song was an old 1940s number written by Louis Jordan and a couple of other people. And I remember, remember seeing this song performed in a musical in London called Five Guys Named Mo in the early 90s. This was one of the Louis Jordan numbers performed in that show. And I knew it from this album, so I was familiar with it. And it's a great, it's just a great little song. And um, it's a sad song. It's about sort of the blues and splitting up and stuff. Um, the, moon, the Moonbeam is possibly his greatest ever ballad, which he wrote. I mean, we'll come to Without You, which he didn't write. But with the Moonbeam song, Harry's vocals on top form. And it's a lovely melody. And... Uh, this is a song to die for, no less. And then Down is a very good pounding piano song to end side one. So then we move over to side two and we start off without you. And there's a bit of a history behind this because um, Harry was at a party. I'll just read you from the, the liner notes from the CD, which came out with some very good bonus tracks in 1999. And without you, there are legends about that one. Harry had heard it at a party in Laurel Canyon and spent days looking for it, thinking it was an obscure Beatles track. He found it on the Badfinger classic album No Dice, which is this album from 1970, December 1970. And uh, just show you the picture of the band. Um, Pete, Tommy, Joey, Mike, there. Um, it's one of their best albums, it really is. And uh, the original Badfinger album version is worth checking out. It's very earthy. But I think Harry realized the potential in the song and decided to make a big orchestra with the help of Richard Perry and Paul Buckmaster, who did the strings, decided to do a huge sort of orchestral version and turned it into the mega hit that was always there in the original song. So basically, um, Perry said to Harry, I th Harry, I think we've got a hit. And by, by coincidence, they were doing the final mix of Without You when they heard Badfinger were recording, recording just down the hall. Harry and Richard invited them in, poured them a little champagne, and then played back the song at top volume. Pete Evans, Pete, <laughs> it says in the liner notes here, if you can believe it, Pete Evans and Tom Ham. It's Pete Ham and Tom Evans, that's a bad mistake. The song's co-writers were reportedly speechless. Without You brought Harry his second Grammy Award for Best Male Vocal. There are probably millions of people who dance their first slow dance to it. Everybody assumes Harry wrote it, but it's a, it's a great song written by Pete Ham and Tom Evans, who sadly are no longer with us. But um, worth checking out both versions, and obviously other people have covered it since, like, such as Maria Carey. Um, so it's a kind of evergreen song, and even Paul McCartney's gone on record saying it's a great number. Um, one of the one of the best songs of all time, no, no less, according to McCartney. And I know Nielsen didn't do many live performances, but I was reading online that he he did guest on, in Ringo's All Star Band at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, September 1992, and did this song, which I'd never heard that before, and I've never seen any footage. If any of you were there and can confirm that this is true, that would be wonderful. Um, it was a huge hit, number one in the US, number one in the UK. The album had got to number three in the US, but had not done well in the UK. Number two in Australia. And the single also got to number one in Canada, Ireland and Australia, and number three in Italy. So that was Without You. And then Coconut is a sort of, sort of wacky, sort of oddball single with the hilarious video with Harry dressed up as a gorilla. And um, this track features some of the musicians from Elton John's band, Caleb Quay and Roger Pope in particular who played on Rock of the Westies and also played on Tumbleweed Connection, Blue Moves, Empty Sky, and uh, Madman Across the Water. So, and we've got Bobby Keys turns up on sax, and Jim Price, and Gary Wright is on keyboards for Without, Without You. Um, and I think it was Terry Wilson was saying in his Beatles book, it's amazing how you could find the same musicians on many albums in the early 70s. They kind of play on each other's sessions, and this album is no exception to a, a, a alongside the people I've already mentioned. We've got Jim Gordon on drums, who was obviously formerly with Derek in the Dominoes and Eric Clapton, and was a member of Traffic around, around about this time, 71, and would later play with Jack Bruce. Uh, Klaus Vormann is on bass, who we all know and love. Chris Bedding, a uh, great guitarist who'd played on Harmony Row, Jack Bruce, and also played with the Wombles 
on a lot of their hit singles in the in the mid 70s and then he played later with Paul McCartney on uh, Give My Regards to Broad Street. Herbie Flowers on bass who played um, the bass line on Walk on the Wild Side, Lou Reed and also would later go on to play with Bowie on Diamond Dogs and with Harrison on Somewhere in England and Gone Troppo and he was on the Transformer album as I said, um, Lou Reed. Um, Stop and Smell the Roses, he's on Ringo, and he's also on Jeff Wayne's superb War of the Worlds. And we've got a guy called John Uribe on guitar, who I don't know much about, but he contributes some tasty guitar throughout the album. And then, so back to the tracks, we've got Let the Good Times Roll, um, an old 50s number written by Shirley Goodman and Leonard Lee. And this is a fun track, and I think there is a footage of Harry doing a rare live performance of this song on YouTube. Jump Into the Fire, recorded earlier in Hollywood, closest to a rocker we have on the album. Superb bass from Herbie Flowers. Uh, number 27 hit in the US. Coconut had gotten to number 8, by the way, in the US as a single. And Jump Into the Fire is very, very atmospheric song. Um, Jim Gordon on great form on the drums. I'll Never Leave You is a nice ballad to finish the album. So a very strong album in terms of songs. And then when this album came out uh, on the CD, uh, it had several bonus tracks. So we got alternate early versions of Without You, Driving Along, Gotta Get Up, Coconut, Down, The Moonbeam Song, Jump Into the Fire, and also an early version of Old Forgotten Soldier, which would later turn up on Pussycats, which is very interesting. Um, to hear. So, and also Harry took the time to record an Italian version of Without You, presumably for the Italian market, because um, the song did get to number three over there. Presumably they played the Italian version on the radio there. Although if you listen to the Italian version, which is on Spotify, I think, uh, it's in one of the sessions, the 71 to 74 sessions album. Um, if you listen to the Italian version, he's singing in Italian throughout, but then when it comes to the last can't live when he goes up an octave that's back to the English presumably because he would have trouble replicating that superb high note which he performed on on the original sessions so great musicianship great production from Richard Perry who would go on to produce the follow-up son of Schmielsen which would see Ringo and Ringo Starr and George Harrison um, as guest artists on that album and then Richard Perry obviously met Ringo during the sessions for that album and and uh, they decided to work together and it ended up on the great Ringo album, which we all know and love from 73. And then Richard Perry's done a lot of other good production as well, Carly Simon to, uh, to name but one. So great, great album, probably his best, his most well-known, uh, although I do have a very soft spot for Pussycats and a very soft spot for the album Harry um, from 69 with... Uh, with a great version of the puppy song and a great cover version of Mother Nature's Son as well. But uh, this album is probably, if push comes to shove, his most consistent and uh, a deserved hit. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.